taste of winter, maybe it has just wet your palate a little bit. Here are our thoughts on what to expect for the winter of 2018 and 19. When we start looking at winter, the first place we look at is the Pacific Ocean. Last year we had a La Nina, this year we have El Nino. It's a warming of the equatorial Pacific waters. Now, usually when you have El Nino, it bides its time. The snow really kicks in later on in the season, more toward January, February, and March. The La Nina, right off the bat. It's cold, it's snowy. We definitely saw that last year. I do think that this year may buck this typical El Nino trend. Now, why does all this talk about the Pacific really matter? When you have a big mass of warmer than average temperatures when it comes to the sea surface, that fires up convection or thunderstorms. Those thunderstorms in turn send lots of heat up into the atmosphere and it can help shape where the jet stream travels and sets up during the winter season. Since it's based more toward the central Pacific right now, that would create a ridge more toward Alaska, a trough down in the eastern United States, and that sends quite a bit of cold our way. Now, another factor that we look at is the polar vortex, something that really jumped into pop culture in the last few years. Now, when the polar vortex, which is a strong moving current of air way up in the atmosphere, is strong, it bottles up a lot of that cold around the pole. So you don't see these big intrusions of really cold air. When it's weaker, it becomes more wavy, more disrupted. And that can allow really cold air to make its way down to where we live in the mid latitudes. And it's already showing signs of disruption early on this winter season. We also look at factors like Eurasian snowfall. How quickly does it advance during the fall? It's sitting around average right now. It's not tipping its hand too much. The QBO is another one of these oscillations, and that's not really pointing too strongly in any one direction either. There's a number of other variables we look at. If you really want to geek out, we well, can head over to CBSBoston.com and all of it's laid out in our blog post there. So here we go, our full outlook for the upcoming season. It starts with December, of course, a month that we see as being colder than average and snowier than a typical El Nino winter. January may offer the best chance for a bit of relief this season, but all signs of that February as well as March will be a very cold and stormy end to the season. The biggest question mark being, will the storm track be just south of us or over the top of us during those two months? All that being said, the official call for snowfall in Boston this upcoming winter 55 to 65 inches of snow, an average season bringing 43, by the way. This would be six of the last seven winters with above average snowfall in Boston with higher amounts expected away from the immediate coast. So that's our best guess. How about yours? You can enter our annual snowfall contest at cbsboston.com. If you are the closest guest for the whole season, you could win a season pass to watch you sit mountain for the next upcoming winter.